everyone, I'm Kara, also known as the Chatterbox. And if you like and subscribe, just maybe I'll zip my mouth. <laughs> Which is kind of impossible since I started talking ever since I was a teeny weeny baby. Mommy? Daddy? I've been laying here thinking. And you know what? I'm thinking we should change the color of this room. Pink? Who does pink these days? That's gender color bias. I've got plans. First we're going... I've always been a talker. I spoke in complete sentences when I was just six months old. And from that moment on, nobody could slow me down or find my off switch. I loved learning about things and sharing. I talked to anyone about anything. Unfortunately, I was the only child, so I didn't have too many people to share with. My parents were very busy people. As I was explaining to the cook, whale sharks are not really whales. Look, these are the gills. Did you know that whales have lungs instead of gills? It's not even a real shark since it eats only plankton, so it's called a whale shark, but it's Eat really your a- your dinner, Kara. But mom, you didn't even look. What do you think, dad? Dad, you like to fish, right? My parents loved their phones and laptops more than me, and that's why I ended up <sighs> talking to all my dolls. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I will be performing the epic poem, The Iliad. Please hold your applause until the very end. Since my parents never gave me much attention, when I was at school, I made the best of it. I was the smartest person in my class. Okay, children, who knows the answer to this question? Oh, me! Pick me! I know. Anyone else other than Kara? Please, I'm begging you. Anyone? Kara, once again. I just read about this, and the answer is actually quite long and complicated. If we're gonna be talking about how big the Earth is, we have to talk about atoms. And if we're gonna be talking about atoms, we have to talk about... I, I was so excited to share. I don't know what came over me, but I just couldn't stop. I spoke so much that the teachers had to call my parents. They rushed me to the doctor, and that's when I was diagnosed with a compulsive talking disorder. That's it. Concentrate on the breathing. Slowly breathe. Don't talk, just breathe deeply. The doctor said deep breaths would help me control my disorder. But as soon as I left, my body adapted. Did you know that there are only eight planets in our solar system? And there are 100,000 million stars. <gasps> Pluto used to be a planet, but it got delisted. Can you believe that planets can be delisted? Do you know who is responsible for poor Pluto? I can tell you. Hold on. <gasps> she's, she's worse. My parents couldn't take it any longer. So the next day, they sent me to live with my grandfather. To say my grandfather's farm was struggling was an understatement. Hello, sweetie. I know we don't have much here, but anything I have is yours. Would you like to learn how to grow some crops? Maybe you'll have better luck than I've had. Oh, yes, yes! I'd love that! Granddad showed me everything. I started reading more about plants. I learned how to operate all the heavy-duty equipment. I even flew a crop duster a few times. In no time, our farm was filled with all sorts of gigantic vegetables and plants. I read in one of my granddad's books that talking to the plants would help them grow. It's the CO2 in our breath. So I held full conversations with every plant and insect I could find. And to my surprise, something amazing happened. Our farm quickly became a tourist attraction, and I had become quite famous for having the most beautiful <laughs> crops and flowers in the whole country. Young lady, how are you able to turn this far around so quickly? Oh, that's easy. You need good soil, water, and some awesome plant food. Oh, what kind of food do you use? Glad you asked. How much time you got? <gasps> Every supermarket and flower shop were knocking down our doors to get our beautiful crops. And then one day, after so many years, guess who decided to show up? Hey, honey. Your mom and I saw you on the news. We always knew you were a special kid. Are you ready to come home? Aren't you going to say anything? Is that a... Soapbox? How dare you! This is my home now! All you two care about is work! I'm tired of being treated like an annoyance! Granddad actually listened to me when I spoke and encouraged me to use my voice and look what happened! We've paid off all his debt! And another thing, it's been like, what, six years? And now, while I was still busy giving mom and dad a piece of my mind, a fancy car pulled up and an older man stepped out, dressed in royal garments. Are you the young lady from this paper? Yes, that's me! Pay no attention to these people. 
They were just leaving. Young lady, this is some of the most impressive florist work I've seen, well, ever. We could use your services at the palace. The king wanted us to live within the castle and headquarters, and I couldn't wait to settle in. Perfect! And I couldn't wait to start my new job in my humongous new home. But I had a lot to learn. As I watered the flowers, I heard a girl's voice. Go on, speak up or you're going into that filthy water. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? You can't even get the words out without stuttering, can you? You bring nothing but shame to our family. Hey, leave him alone! The only shame that will come to your family is from the king trying to put a crown on that giant head of yours. It'll be called the Cranium Conundrum. How dare you speak to me that way? I'm telling the royal guards. Are you sure you can fit that massive brain pan through the chamber doors, your majesty? Or shall we grease it up first? Th th thanks for, for saving me. I I'm Alfie. Oh, I know who you are, your majesty. We've read every book about you guys. For example, your great-great-grandmother was allergic to mustard. Also, her cat was gluten-free. Did you know that, your majesty? His royalty, Alfonso? I, I, I didn't, but can you p p please call me Al? Wait a second. Let me get this straight. You have difficulty speaking? I know someone who can help. From then on, Alfonso and I were inseparable. I taught him how to publicly speak, and he taught me how to slow down and use my gift of gab not to drive everyone away. We played games to improve the prince's vocabulary and pronunciation. We lip-synced karaoke together to help his stutter. Besides my flowers and grandfather, Alfonso was the only person I wanted to be around. I don't think I can give my speech for this parade. What if I stutter again? I'll be right there, and you will be just fine. Thank you, K Kara. He hugged me, and for some odd reason, I felt butterflies in my tummy. We had practiced for months on his speech, and finally the day had arrived. But just before Alfonso was about to go live, I saw Esmeralda fiddling with some wires. I knew she was up to no good. What exactly are you doing, Esmeralda? That's your majesty to you. And if you really want to know, I'm going to show the country exactly how pathetic my brother is. This recording of him stuttering will put him in his place. If you were smart, you would stay out of royal business. I couldn't let her sabotage the only friend I had. If this got me kicked out, then so be it. I did the only thing I knew how to do well. I spoke. With a disguised voice, of course. The kingdom my father has built is being bespeeched by those who wish to pursue their selfish agendas. When our speech finished, Alfonso was a national celebrity. I can't thank you enough. Your sister didn't stand a chance. We're a great team, Al. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Kara. The speech was so good, my family is sending me on a world tour. I'll be gone for a year. Oh, um, I'm so happy for you. I'll make sure to send you a TikTok every day. How about every hour? <laughs> I have another surprise. I told my father how much you helped me and he got you into the best school in the country. If anyone deserves to have their brains recognized, it's you. When I first met this dorky screw up, I thought of him as my kid brother. As we sat by the lake and I looked into his eyes, I started to think I might be falling for him. Just like that, my best friend was gone. Now I was at the mercy of a little tyrant with a gigantic head. Everyone was excited for my first day of school, except me. I was going to the richest school in the country, but I wasn't rich. My clothes were not exactly designer brands, all I had going for me was my brain and big mouth. But after all, it's just a school, I thought. Couldn't be that bad, could it? <clears throat> so yeah, turns out plenty can go bad when you're on the wrong side of a princess. The next six months was no picnic. With no friends, I spent my break surrounded by the only things that were nice to me, the flowers. That's weird, I don't remember anything about a solar eclipse. Heads up. Did you know polo balls used to be made of bamboo, leather, and rubber? Now they're all plastic. Still, plastic can make quite an impact at over 100 miles an hour. Did you just ask to kiss me? My horse had that pleasure. Not exactly how I imagined surprising you with my return. Let's get you some ice. I could feel all the jealous girl's eyes burning holes into me as I rode off with the prince. 
and I couldn't have cared any less. It was insane how handsome he had gotten in only a year. I'm sorry I didn't let you know I was back, but my father has decided he will step down from his throne. That's great news. Just looking at you, I can tell you're ready to be king anyway. Not if my sister has anything to say about it. She has the queen on her side. My mom will do anything to make Esmeralda the new queen. I gagged at the thought of her being the ruler of my country. Well, how about we make sure that never happens? Deal. From then on, I knew I had to do everything I could to make sure Esmeralda didn't get that throne. All the girls at school were so annoying as they tried desperately to get the prince's attention. I knew most of them were Esmeralda's minions who were all out to get Alfonso and create a scandal that would sabotage his chances to be king. That wasn't going to happen on my watch. Make way, everyone! Royalty coming through! Step back three paces. You can look, but you can't touch. Like the sun. Glance and look away. Eventually, Alfonso begged me to be his buffer. I felt like one of his bodyguards as I tried to keep away the designer hyenas. Kara, we need to talk. I can't hear you over the howling! I need to ask you something. I want you to be my girlfriend. Honestly, I was just as shocked as everyone. Shocked, but pleased. I just wanted to be a simple gardener, and now I was the talk of the school, the town, and the country. The future king's new girlfriend is what the papers would call me in the morning. The truth was, I was totally freaking out. I was so stressed I couldn't sleep. So I took a walk in my peaceful place, my garden. I just wanted to be with my flowers. As I got closer to my garden, I almost collapsed. All of my flowers had been destroyed in one fell swoop. I knew only one person who could be cruel and evil enough to do this. Let this serve as a warning to you, servant. You will never date my son, and the throne will be Esmeralda's. I was devastated. The next day, I was assigned to work under the queen since the garden was destroyed. I knew it was going to be bad, but I was still hopeful. Your chore list for today. That's not so bad. I was blamed for the fire in the garden, even though everyone knew who was really responsible. From then on, the queen tried to make my life miserable. Little did I realize, good old granddad had my back. Granddad wasted no time in helping me clear my name after he spoke to the security guards. The king was furious at the queen's actions, and I was immediately given my old job back. Unfortunately, my job description underwent a tiny change due to her majesty. The queen made sure I was still the castle's whipping girl. Nothing changed, except now I was inside and not working outside. That suited me, though since this was the most important night of the royal calendar. Somehow, I need to talk to Alfonso. Psst. I can't give my speech. I know I'm going to screw it up and Esmeralda's going to take the throne. Oh, don't even get me started on Esmeralda and the queen. I've got so many issues with them. Oh no, oh no. Too late. Here it comes. It ain't gonna be pretty. <gasps> I can't remember what I said, but all my frustration with the queen and her evil daughter came pouring out. What was supposed to be a pep talk for Alfonso turned into a roast of my two nemesis. Oh, you're funny. And when you get on a roll, nothing can stop you. Glad to be of service to you, your majesty. Alfonso, you can do this. I believe in you. Thank you, and you're right. I can do this. Come on. When I opened the door to the closet, I knew I had made a massive mistake. Oh no, my microphone was on. I had committed treason in front of everyone. This was exactly the screw-up the queen and her mini-me minions were looking for. You have made a mockery of our country. You and your grandfather will be dealt the swiftest punishment possible for your insubordination. I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was rather humorous. Something that's been missing for many years now. I beg your pardon? You remember laughing, don't you? Some of her jokes were rather dead on. Do you think it's funny to say our lovely daughter has a head so large that when she wears a crown, she's able to receive transmissions from the space station? <laughs> funny, yes. Appropriate. You trust me? Always. And what other jokes tickled you, your majesty? What was that one you made about the queen's shopping habits? 
I was just observing it's way cheaper to go shopping than to go to a therapist. But her style is so bad, all her handmaids are in therapy anyway. It's a psychedelic shopaholic extravaganza oozing palooza. <laughs> you are very funny, young lady. It's decided. You're my new court jester. Guards, release her. With a new room, new job, and an absolutely ridiculous costume, I was feeling like the royalty I had pretended to be with all my stuffed animals all those years ago. You're doomed! The queen went to her lawyers and claimed his majesty was crazy for hiring a madwoman like myself! She was going to make sure Esmeralda was queen, one way or another. W what are we going to do? Win. We're going to win. The day had finally come where it would be decided who would run the country. Esmeralda or Alfonso. I could tell straight away that Al was nervous. He didn't need to worry, though. I had his back. Your Honor, I'll be presenting the case why Bucktooth Beaver over there has no right to Prince Alfonso's throne. Exhibit 1, just look at that face. Objection! You can say that again. Objection noted. Sustain. Do you have any other evidence? Glad you asked. I do have a few things to say on the matter. <gasps> when I finished, the whole country was laughing. By the end of the day, I had gone viral. And at the end of the next day, the queen and Esmeralda were gone. I had made Esmeralda and her mom even more famous than they already were. Just not in the way they were hoping. King Alfonso would go on to be a great king. Kind, compassionate, thoughtful, and a tremendous public speaker. Turns out, I got to be quite a bit more famous than I was expecting to. I turned my so-called disability into my number one asset. And now, as queen, you better believe I've got a few things to say. Growing up, my dad and I used to spend hours listening to his old records. And sometimes he used to teach me how to play his old guitar. You see, honey, it's not that hard. Yeah, but you're playing for me, dad. One day, honey, you are going to be a famous musician like I could never be. Oh, dad! What's wrong? I had a sharp pain in my ear and dad rushed me to the doctor. And after that day, I lost my hearing. I could no longer hear the sound of music again. After some time, my parents made sure that I went to the best school to help me understand sign language and lip read. Mariah, we are so proud of you for staying strong. Not many people have your strength. Yes, you are one amazing girl. You inspire me. I realized that there were a lot of people like me who also had a hearing condition, and they lived normal lives too. But my sister Jasmine, who was two years older than me, started acting different. Maybe I should find another home, since everything in this house is all about Mariah! Once, when I was in seventh grade, I had a talent show for all the parents to attend my school. But Jasmine threw a huge tantrum because she had her tennis game on the same day. Okay, I'll go to Mariah's school, and Dad will come watch you, Jasmine. You never show up for any of mine, Mom! Okay, then I'll come for your tennis game, and Dad can go watch Mariah. That's the thing! Both of you are always watching Mariah! And then she took my guitar for the talent show and broke it in half. And I got so mad at her that I pounced on her. And then Dad pulled me away and said the most awful thing ever. It's better that she got that thing broken now, because you are never going to become a musician. So let's forget about that dream, okay? Dad, what are you saying? A musician is made by listening and- Stop! Mariah, let's go for a walk. I looked at Dad sternly as I walked out, and my relationship with him changed ever since. And then one morning, as I made my way downstairs, I saw Dad had taken our record collection and gotten rid of all the songs we used to sing together. Honey, don't you think this is a little extreme? There's no point in training her to be a musician if she can't hear the notes. But Dad, I can learn. I can find a way to listen. Look, it's not your fault, honey. But things are going to be different from now on. It didn't take long for my sister to jump in and try to take my place. Dad, I love music too. Yeah, right. You hate all of our music. I can be a better musician than you. And I'm prettier than her, Dad. You girls go to your room right now. 
For the next few months, Jasmine was a royal pain. Jasmine took every chance she could to rub it in my face that she was dad's new favorite. The worst part is she would take my hearing aid and hide it, making me late for everything. One day, I couldn't take it anymore. I marched over to Jasmine at recess. Give me back my hearing aid, you spoiled brat! I didn't hear you say please! Jasmine thought she was so funny, but this time, I wasn't going to take it. Hey! Get off me! Somebody help! I had gotten my hearing aid back, but soon, I was surrounded by all the adults at the park. Let her go! What a wild child! Without my hearing aid, I couldn't understand what they were saying to me. I thought for sure I was going to be in big trouble until I felt a tap on my shoulder. I had never seen this boy before, but he was really handsome. And most importantly, he knew sign language! Are you okay? I saw everything. I'm Ethan. I just moved from Oklahoma. I believe this is yours. I could tell Ethan was the perfect gentleman when he put my hearing aid back in for me. I had butterflies when his hand brushed against my ear. There you go. That should be better. Thank you for helping me. My sister can be a real jerk. I have one of those at home, too. Looks like we have a few things in common. Soon, I found out he and I had more than a few things in common when I went to his house the next day. It turns out, Ethan's mom and dad were both hearing impaired just like me. Ethan learned sign language to help them out. It was so sweet! When I got to his room, I found out we had another thing in common. Ethan loved music just as much as I did. His room looked like a record store. He had every album I had ever thought of, even some of the ones dad and I used to listen to. You like music too? I love to make music, but my sister doesn't like me working on my own stuff. I used to love music, but it caused me a lot of problems with my family too. Here, let me show you something. I shouldn't have been surprised, but Ethan was really good. I thought we were listening to some famous musician on Spotify, but all the songs were made by him. He could be famous. I had to ask him why his sister didn't allow him to pursue his passion. My sister is a TikTok star, and my job is to make music for her videos. My whole family are her employees. You're too talented to make music for some stupid TikTok video, Ethan. <gasps> then all of a sudden, Ethan freaked out. Oh no. She's already home. She's not going to like that you're here. You should go. I was confused because I had already met his parents. What could make Ethan so anxious? It didn't take me long to find out why. Hey, Anna. Uh, this is Mariah. Oh, good. Finally, they've hired another maid. Listen, I need you to run me a hot bath and have a hot cocoa ready after. Also, I need a facial mask. But your skin is so dry. I think a facial mask might be a waste of money. How dare you talk to me like that? I was going to speak to you like a person, but I don't know if you qualify. Dad! I want her fired! I'm not for hire. I'm in school. Well, you better not go to the same school I'm enrolled in, because I'm going to be the queen of that school, and I can make your life miserable. Whatever. Thank you for having me over. Your parents were lovely. I made sure Anna knew that if she wanted a fight, I was gonna give her a good one. The only thing I didn't suspect is that Anna would play so dirty. When I arrived at school the next morning, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Anna sitting with Jasmine. I marched up to them to find out what was going on. As much as my sister was a brat, I wanted to see why she was sitting with this little devil. Oh, wow! Look what the cat dragged in! What are you doing sitting over here, Jasmine? And where did you get these clothes? Chill! Will you stop embarrassing me? My new friends bought them for me! New friends? That's right! Her cool new friends! I told you that I was way cooler than anyone in this poor town! Your sister knows this! My first day, and I already have more friends than you've had in your whole life! I don't care about these hanger-ons! I just want you to stay away from my sister! I know that you probably don't have an iPhone, but you should know that I'm one of the biggest teenage TikTok stars in the country. Anything I want, I can get, including your sister. I was so angry that I wanted to hop across the lunch table and give Anna a face full of jello. Jasmine, these girls are no good, and mom and dad wouldn't want you hanging out with her. Oh my goodness, Mariah, you're so embarrassing! Anna is the only one who understands me. She knows what it's like living with people who aren't normal. My parents had never taught us to even think like that, so I knew my sister was under the worst type of influence. If I were you, I would leave my sister alone. I think I'm gonna make her my special pet project. Maybe she'll pass the test, or maybe not. 
Come on, girls. Let's go. Anna had made her choice. Now it was time to make mine. I loved spending time with Ethan, but I had another mission in mind. Hey, Ethan. I was wondering if you could show me how you put together the music for your sister. Sure. Ethan and I worked on the music for hours. But when Ethan went to the bathroom, I made a few changes to Anna's music. I knew my plan worked when my sister came into my room the next morning screaming. Oh my goodness! Anna's video has been sabotaged! Oh yeah? I wonder who could have done that. You had better not have messed up her new video, Mariah! When I tell her you're going to be in bigger trouble than that loser brother! What happened to Ethan? I found out that Anna had thrown all of Ethan's equipment away. And worse than that, she was going to make the whole family move as punishment. My revenge had taken away everything that Ethan loved. The next day, when I went to Ethan's house, I found him standing in the yard with all his broken equipment while Anna was lecturing him and Jasmine was there with her. And I hope this is a lesson to you all not to mess with me. Who do you think you are? I'm going to be the queen of this town. Now bend your knee to me and maybe I'll spare your little friend's last record. I knew I was in way over my head, but before I knew what happened, I blurted it out. We should have a competition. The loser has to shave their head. You couldn't beat Anna at anything. I can and I will. You can even pick the competition. Fine. I'll choose music. Good luck trying to keep up to me with your disability. The truth was, I hadn't listened to music in years. But I couldn't stand this new girl coming in and trying to ruin my life. That evening, I begged my parents to let Ethan stay at my house. But Jasmine threw a tantrum about this too. I don't want them staying in our house! Come on, Dad! You know they are going to lose the talent show and we're going to be embarrassed again! Honey, your sister is right. You can't carry any notes. Yes, I can, Dad. And I'll find a way to make music just as good as anyone else. Fine. You can use the backyard. With all of Ethan's equipment destroyed, we had nothing to make any music for the talent show. We should give up. There's no way we can beat Anna in a music contest. She's been training since she was a baby. We have passion on our side. But even at my house, we weren't safe, as Jasmine was spying on us, and much worse. She turned the sprinklers on, getting all of our work soaking wet. When the next morning came, Ethan and I were ready to give up. I had made such a stupid bet, and now everyone's life was going to be turned upside down because of me. Come on, let's get the ones we can say. But when I reached down to pick up the equipment, something crazy happened. Wow, did you hear that? Whatever sound I had just made sounded like something from another world. I think it's your hearing aid, Mariah. That sounds so cool. Wait a second. I think I just might be able to use this. When Ethan was done, we had a cool electronic song that I was sure no one had heard before. Even better was the fact Ethan and I got much closer. We even played the song for my mom. You guys are going to win the talent show for sure. Thanks for always believing in me, Mom. Please, this isn't real music. Real music involves instruments and notes. What I didn't see was my sister Jasmine at the top of the stairs recording our music. Anna hired a full band to back up her singing, and here I was with my mud-covered laptop. Before the show, Ethan came up to me and gave me all the confidence I needed. You are one of the most talented people I have ever met. Thank you for standing up for me and believing in me. I know you can do this. Do you really think your silly little hearing aid sounds are going to win this competition? Your sister let me hear everything. My band is the best money can buy. And you think you can beat me? I know I can. Do you think you can do it without your secret weapon? One of Anna's friends used a magnet to snatch away my hearing aid. I felt like I was in the park all those years ago. But then I looked at Ethan, and he sent me a sign. Knowing that Ethan and my mom were behind me was all I needed. I couldn't hear anything as the crowd began to clap when the show started. The only thing I knew is that they were loving Anna's performance. She was such a jerk, but when she finished, the entire auditorium were on their feet. I was so nervous, but I looked to my right and saw Ethan. And then I saw my mom in the crowd with a sign that said, Go Mariah! I took a deep breath and put my hand on the soundboard. And when I hit the first button, something crazy happened. I could feel the vibration going through my arm. It was almost like I could feel the music. 
Without my hearing aid, all my other senses were heightened. I felt like I was one with the soundboard. And before I knew it, everyone was on their feet. Anna didn't stand a chance. I won the competition easily, and Anna ran out of the building crying. I laughed. For now, I would let her think she would have to shave her head. But in reality, I wouldn't be so cruel. I'm sorry for doubting you, honey. I just didn't want you to experience the same failure I did. Mariah doesn't think about failure. She focuses on her goal and doesn't let obstacles get in the way. We raised her to be strong, and you forgot that. Even Jasmine came to me to apologize. I'm sorry for being so cruel to you. I guess you really are cooler than Anna. There's no such thing as cool, Jasmine. I just like to do things that I enjoy. It's cool when you pursue things you love, not what other people think is cool. Just then, one of the parents came up to me. That was one of the coolest DJ sets I've ever seen. I'd like to sign you to my record label. Do you have a manager? In fact, I might just have my very first one right here. Hi, I'm Ellie, and I have alopecia, a rare condition that stops my hair from growing. That's right, I'm completely bald. Before you start feeling sorry for me, I'll have you know I think it kind of makes me look cool. However, my mom didn't seem to think so. And ever since we found out I had it, she fussed over me while completely ignoring my twin sister, Tessa. This, of course, made Tessa hate me, and she made it her mission to make my life difficult. Like this one morning, I was asleep when I was jolted awake by freezing water on my face. What the heck, Tessa? The water's freezing! Ellie, why are you screaming? Are you feeling okay? I'm fine, Mom. Tessa, did you just pour water on Ellie? Why would you do that? Especially in her condition! You sent me to wake her up, so I did! For goodness sake, Mom! It's just water! Ellie is just bald, and not a fragile egg! Tessa was annoying, but she was right. Mom treated me like I was going to break any minute. She was always buying oils and products she thought would heal me. Ellie, honey! I met this woman at work who recommended some special oil that helps hair grow within a week! I'm so excited for you to try it! Thanks for trying to help, Mom, but I don't need to be fixed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for school. Less than an hour later, I walked into class, busy checking my phone, when I stumbled on a desk and fell right next to Tessa and her mean girl squad. You're so clumsy! It's hard to imagine that you and I are related. Totally! You are so much prettier, Tessa. Caleb should be dating you, not Ellie. Caleb was my swoon-worthy boyfriend, and all the popular girls hated that he was dating me. You'd totally win prom king and queen. I stood up and faced Tessa and her two attack dogs. You know, Jen, you might want to fix your crooked eyebrows and eyeliner, because you look like you're going for that given-up-on-life look. Who did your makeup? A clown? The whole class laughed as my best friend, Hannah, stood up from her seat and high-fived me. Hannah was the school rich kid, but she was just as unpopular as I was. Ooh, burn! You know they'll probably make you pay for that. As Hannah and I laughed, my phone pinged with a notification and I quickly checked it. Jeez, is your phone on fire? Caleb has been ignoring my texts for three days. Thought that was him. What a jerk! Are you sure he's not doing something behind your back? What? No way! Caleb would never hurt me. Even though I said that confidently, I couldn't help but worry. So after last period, I went looking for him. And I found him watching Tessa strike poses on top of a pyramid formed by her cheerleader friends. Suddenly, one of the girls' knees buckled. And when she went down, all of them collapsed like dominoes. But at the last second, Caleb jumped in and caught Tessa before she hit the ground. I was glad she wasn't hurt, but I had to clear my throat when they stared at each other a little too long. Ahem. <clears throat> that was impressive. Oh, hey, Ellie. Is something wrong? Do I stink? Why have you been ignoring my texts? I texted you more than five times. Gee, he's clingy much. Caleb and Tessa's friends laughed, and I stared at Caleb, thinking he'd come to my defense, but he stayed quiet. You're such a jerk, Caleb! 
Come on, Ellie. Forget him. Let's go. After we left the field, we got into Anna's car, and she drove us home. I couldn't help but notice how angry she looked. Anne, I know you care about me, but maybe you're overreacting. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Caleb is ignoring you, and then you find him watching Tessa with a dreamy look on his face just before he saves her like a knight in shining armor. Also, she has long hair and you're... Bald, do you mean that Caleb is playing me with Tessa because I'm bald? I couldn't believe my best friend would imply such a horrible thing. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean... I'm just upset that you can't see what's happening right under your nose. You need to break up with him. Oh, calm down. What's with you today? Don't say I didn't warn you. A few days later, we were all watching TV when the doorbell rang and I opened the door to find Caleb holding a bouquet of flowers and my favorite ice cream. Delivery for Ellie Davis from her adoring boyfriend. Thanks, but no, I'm still mad at you. I know, babe. I'm so sorry. I ignored your texts. Please let me make it up to you. I'd been giving Caleb the silent treatment at school, but I hadn't broken up with him like Hannah suggested. Honey, that's so cute. And those are such pretty roses. Forgive the poor boy. Babe, please listen to the wise lady. And let me come in so we can share this ice cream. Oh, he's such a charmer. Ugh, fine. You're forgiven. You can come in. Really? Yay! Caleb was so happy, he picked me up and spun me around. I was so smitten at that moment, but Tessa had a murderous look on her face. A few minutes later, I was enjoying the ice cream when I noticed that Caleb was typing furiously on his phone. <laughs> is everything okay? You're texting at a hundred miles a minute. Everything is fine. It's... Before he could finish talking, his phone beeped and when he checked it, he stood up so fast. I'll be right back. A few minutes later, I heard shouting and when I looked out my window, I saw Caleb in a heated argument with Tessa. Caleb, if you don't tell Ellie the truth, I will. You know it's wrong to keep her in the dark about this. I'm begging you, Tessa. Please don't tell her. We only did it one time and it was a mistake. Ellie can't find out. The moment Caleb said that, I saw Red and ran to go confront them. When I stormed out the front door, Caleb and Tessa jumped apart. I heard everything you both said. I can't believe you could betray me like that. Ellie, I was going to tell you- Tell me what? That you're so jealous of me? I'm not. You got this all wrong. I know what I heard. Babe, please forgive me. I promise it won't happen again. When Caleb tried to touch my arm, I shoved him then picked up a rock and smashed his car windshield. Oh my God, are you insane? You just broke my windshield. And you just broke my heart. With that, I ran across the street and took a shortcut to Hannah's house. I really needed to see my best friend. As I ran through the woods, I stopped to catch my breath when something cold touched my feet. I looked down to see some kind of scaly creature climbing my ankle. Just then, Trent, Hannah's stepbrother, appeared and started to laugh at me. <laughs> You're such a scaredy cat. That's just my pet lizard. Trent always kept to himself and was branded the school weirdo. Even though I'd caught him staring at me a couple of times, he'd never said a single word to me. Until now. Come on, you can touch her. She won't bite. No thanks, I'm good. What are you doing out in the woods anyway? Isn't it obvious? I'm walking my pet lizard. Wow. <laughs> Can't say I've heard that one before. Glad I could make you laugh. You look kind of sad. What are you doing in the woods yourself? Well, I'm taking a breather from my toxic twin sister. Is Hannah home? Yeah, she's in the backyard playing Project Runway. Okay, thanks for cheering me up. See you later, alligator. It's a lizard. When I got to Hannah's, I climbed the fence and I fell into her backyard, scaring Hannah, who was wearing heels. Jeez, Ellie, you scared me! Why can't you use a gate like a normal person? Your gate is always locked, and I don't have my phone with me. Why are you wearing heels? Oh, um, it's nothing. Ellie, why are you here? Ouch! I'm sorry, that was rude. I couldn't wait anymore, so I told Hannah everything. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. It's okay. I'm so glad you're done with him. The next morning, I walked into class 
and Trent's face lit up. Hey, scaredy cat. When he spoke to me, everyone stared at him. Trent had never said a word in class before, and now there he was, smiling and waiting for me to answer him. Hey Trent, where's your pet? His name is Blizzard, and no, I don't have him with me. He hates school, unlike you. You named your pet Lizard, Blizzard? Pals, since when do you talk to my weirdo stepbrother? Don't call him that, he's your brother. Ugh, don't remind me. You're being really mean, and that's unlike you. Please apologize to him. Ugh. Okay, Saint Ellie. As the days passed, Trent and I started to hang out at the spot where we met in the woods. And soon, we started calling it our spot. Cute, I know. One afternoon, we'd just sat when we heard giggling nearby. <laughs> Who was that? Nobody ever comes here. I'll go check. I'm going with you. I was walking behind Trent when he stopped in his tracks, turned around, and took my hand. Ellie, I'm so sorry for what you're about to see. See what? Them. I followed Trent's gaze, and I froze. Right in front of me was Hannah and Caleb kissing. I couldn't believe my eyes. Before Trent could stop me, I rushed towards them with blind rage. What the heck, Hannah? It's been you this whole time? I expected Hannah to be shocked or sorry, but instead, she turned to me and smiled. Yeah, Ellie. It was fun watching you blame Tessa. You're so clueless half the time. Caleb and I have been together for months now. So all those times you advised me to leave Caleb, you were secretly pining after him? Who's pining? I only had to look at him once and he was mine. I didn't recognize the girl standing in front of me. Why did you do all of this? For popularity, of course. Bagging Caleb will definitely make me new friends. Plus, being your friend was kind of exhausting. Hi, I'm Ellie and I'm bald and I'm smart and my boyfriend adores me. I charged at her, but Trent held me back. Hey, she's not worth it. I'm sorry, Ellie. As I watched the two Judases leave, I remembered. Tessa! Oh my god, I've been accusing her wrongly this whole time! I have to go talk to her! A few minutes later, Trent and I walked into our compound and heard someone singing beautifully. Wow, that's beautiful. Where's it coming from? I looked around and pointed to an old tree house in our backyard. Up there! Come on, let's go see! We climbed up the ladder into the tree house, and when we peeped, I was surprised to see Tessa recording herself singing. Tessa? Oh, I had no idea you could sing so well. It's so beautiful. Ellie, what are you doing here? I was so nervous. What if she never forgave me? I came to apologize. I just saw Caleb and Hannah kissing. I'm really sorry for the things I said. Ellie, you really hurt me. How could you believe I'd do such horrible things? I thought you hated me. You've barely said a word to me for years, unless we're fighting. It wasn't that hard to believe that, especially after I overheard your argument. You didn't even give me a chance to explain. That argument was not about Caleb and me. It was about him and Hannah. A few days ago, I caught them kissing in the library. Oh my god. I'm sorry they did that to you, but you're not so perfect either. Now, if you'll excuse me. With that, Tessa put on her earphones and completely ignored me. So Trent and I left. The next morning, I walked into class to see Caleb and Hannah holding hands. Not only was Hannah wearing makeup, she was dressed differently too, and in heels. So that's why she was practicing walking in them in her backyard. Hannah, with Caleb? Isn't she friends with Ellie the Baldy? Yeah, did you notice she turned into a diva overnight? She certainly doesn't look nerdy now. You look so good, Hannah. Congrats on bagging Caleb. I'm so happy for you. You're so fake, Jen. Isn't it just last week that I saw you in Caleb's DM? As days went by, Tessa ignored my existence, while I ignored my backstabbing best friend and my two-timing boyfriend. In class, I moved seats and sat next to Trent. Hannah became Jen's BFF until one afternoon. Trent and I were goofing around during lunch, a few tables from us. Hannah and Caleb, or Haleb as everyone called them now, seemed to be in deep conversation, when suddenly, Hannah stood up and slapped Caleb right on his face. Then she dumped her lunch tray on him. 
Yo, check it out. Caleb fight. You're such a jerk. I can't help how I feel about her. Being with you was a mistake. Uh-oh, is he talking about you? Before I could even think about what Caleb had said, Jen walked towards them and shoved Hannah. Don't be so desperate, Hannah. Caleb just left you for me. Now scram! My jaw dropped when Jen sat on Caleb's lap and proceeded to kiss him. Oh. My. God. The whole cafeteria went quiet as we all stared at the drama unfolding before us. Unable to take the humiliation, Hannah ran out in tears. I guess it's true what they say. Karma is not a lady. Weeks later, much to my delight, I was voted Student of the Year. And the Student of the Year award goes to... Ellie Davis. As I went to receive my award, I smiled at Trent and hugged my mom. It would have been a perfect moment, except Tessa wasn't there. Over the last few weeks, I'd apologized to her over and over, but she was still angry. Congratulations on the award, Ellie. Thanks, Mrs. Peters. As I walked down from the podium, I got the shock of my life when Tessa walked in and everyone gasped. I couldn't believe it. She was completely bald. Tessa, what did you do? I was tired of people being mean to you, especially after what Caleb did. <laughs> now they'll have to pick on both of us. I dare anyone to try us. Aw, Tessa. I love you for doing this. I thought you hated me. I don't hate you, Ellie. I'm jealous Mom likes you better because you're smart and she fusses over you. Tess, I'm sorry for not believing you and for being a bad sister who doesn't even know that you can sing. I'll try to do better. While Tessa and I hugged, Mom approached us. Tessa, dear, it's so sweet of you to shave your hair to support your sister. You both look beautiful, and I love you both equally. Tessa, I heard you singing in the treehouse, and you have a very beautiful voice. If you want to, you can go to music school on the weekends. Wow, thanks so much, Mom. As the three of us hugged, Trent approached us. Oh, this is so sweet. Someone cutting onions in here. Shut up, Trent. Can't you see we're having a moment? I bet I could break an egg on your heads. Welcome to my world, sis. And you, you get a pass for that jab just because you're cute. But if you try another one, I'll kick your butt. You think I'm cute? Aww. Ellie and Trent sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. I was so embarrassed, but I couldn't keep the smile off my face. Hey, I think you're cute too. Hi, I'm Pearl from Australia. When I was a kid, it was always my pretty mom and I. She owned a big farm, which I used to love, until one day, a splash of mud from the pig den hit my face, and I went hysterical. I washed my face for so long that mom's workers got concerned. Pearl, do you want to scrap your face off for just a splash of mud? <laughs> oh dear, when did you become such a neatnik? Mom thought it wasn't a big deal, until five years later, when we went to a fancy restaurant to celebrate my 10th birthday. My eyes fell to the table when I saw a food smear. Ew! Don't keep my cake here! Okay, let's find another table. No! They're all icky! And just like that, I began to wipe every available surface. Mom and others couldn't stop me no matter how hard they tried, till I fainted from exhaustion. I was diagnosed with germophobia, an unhealthy fear of germs. Over time, my condition worsened, and people viewed me strangely. But Mom remained my one and only bestie. We still went to her farm together, though I stuck to caring for the flowers. The sight and smell of them made me so happy, and they fetched us money. And then one day at the farm, Mom suddenly came to me in tears. Mom! What's going on? Pearl, we are about to lose this farm if I don't renew payment for the lease. And I don't have the money. When no one seemed willing to help us, Mom got the craziest idea. I saw this guy on a dating app. He's a vet doctor and he is crazy about my beauty. If I marry him, he can support me and we won't lose the farm. Are you thinking straight, Mom? You can't marry someone for money. Worse, someone from the internet. He also has no ex-wife, no kids. Perfect, right? How are you sure of that? You don't even know him in person. Not for long. The next day, I came back from school to find muddy footprints <gasps> everywhere. 
What in the world? I began to clean my way inside until I ended up in the sitting room where mom and a strange big head were smooching. Um, welcome back, sweetie. Meet your stepdad to be, Jack. He just proposed. You told me about him just yesterday. We were still talking when Jack grabbed my hand just to rudely place a kiss on it. Nice to finally meet you. I left them in a hurry to wash my hands. I couldn't believe that mom would agree to marry a man so rashly. The next morning, I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth, and my anger bubbled further when I saw Jack brushing with my toothbrush. <gasps> what are you doing? That's my toothbrush. There wasn't an extra. And after all, we are all going to be family, right? I felt like punching him all over. What monkey taught you that family means sharing toothbrushes? Or Before I could finish, Jack loomed over me like a monster. You holier than thou neat freak. Don't worry. I will make you normal the moment I become your stepdad. What's all the noise about? The moment he heard mom's voice, Jack grabbed me in a choking hug. Nothing. Pearl and I are just getting to know each other. Aww, how sweet. Breakfast is ready. The guy was a psycho. I went to school thinking of how I could rescue mom from Jack. It made me so distracted that during practicals, I missed my footing and fell face first into a pile of manure. My classmates saw it as a perfect time to make fun of me. Newsflash! Miss Too Clean has just landed in cow poop! I was on the verge of passing out from the horror of manure on my face when Steve, our class president, came and began to wipe my face clean with antibacterial wipes. You all right? Yes, thank you. Anyone else have something stupid to say? No one dared to, because as much as Steve was friendly, he wasn't one to be messed with. After school, Steve saw me off, and I felt gooey inside as we walked side by side. Thanks again. Before I could finish, an old woman shoved a picture of a chihuahua in our faces. Have you guys seen my pup? She has a star scar under her paw. I would remember if I saw a cute pup like this. Me too. Well, if you do, please call me. I'm Mama G. I felt really sorry for the woman, so I took the poster to help her look for her pup. On getting home, I was shocked with the sight of Jack throwing pet snacks all over the living room for a pink chihuahua. Hey, you're back. Got this pup today. Sweet, right? Leave our house! We can't deal with someone as messy as you! Too bad. Your mom needs me right now. You can go pop in the popcorn machine for all I care. I went to get my phone so I could secretly record Jack as he says more nasty things, but when I came back, he was gone with the dog. Jack! Jack! I froze when I noticed the poster torn to shreds on the floor. Why would he do such a thing? Maybe he was the chihuahua thief. Mom got so mad at me when I told her my suspicions later. I can see you're just trying to find faults with Jack. Later, when I eavesdropped on their phone call with Jack, I could hear all sorts of mews and barks from animals. Hear that? Jack is a vet doctor and has all sorts of pets in his. Stop imagining things! I went to bed angry because mom swept everything under the rug. But my anger was quickly forgotten because my own Prince Charming was ready to sweep me off my feet. At school the next day, I was about to sneak to the rooftop where I usually ate alone during lunchtime when somebody blocked my path. Steve! Where are you off to? I can't eat in the cafeteria. You have no idea how much of a mess people make when they eat. I can't stand that. You can if you just look at me. I swear, I eat without spilling. <laughs> Arrogant much? He even asked permission for his friends to join us. Sure, why not? Don't worry, you're gonna like them. And I did. They were so funny. And for the first time, I was actually having fun with people. After school, Steve asked for us to hang out during the weekend, and I said yes. But Mom had other plans. I was hoping you and I, plus Jack, could do a little bonding this weekend. You're the one getting married to Jack, Mom, so you go bond with him. Mom <gasps> seemed hurt, but I refused to show support for the messy choice she'd made. After that, I decided to take a walk, and as I was enjoying the fresh air, I met Steve on the road. Hey, uh, what you doing out here? Just taking a walk. Are you following me? I can, if you want me to. Steve was so flirting with me, and I couldn't stop blushing. We decided to go to the arcade from there. The time we spent there was the most fun I'd had in a long time. He even bought me a rose-patterned bracelet. May I? I blushed at the sheer sweetness of him putting the bracelet on my wrist. My germaphobe stepmom coped better when she had reminders of things she loved. You love flowers. 
Maybe this can be your soothing reminder. Where have you been all my life? Huh? I mean, um, thank you. Steve and I kept hanging out every weekend after that. He made it so easy to forget Mom, Jack, and my disorder. But there was something I was curious about. You never talk about your dad. The moment I asked, anger ripped off him in waves. You mean the baboon that caused my birth. <gasps> He's that ugly? More like nasty. Jumps from one woman to another. I don't want anything to do with him or anyone close to him. His mood cut our date short, and I went home regretting I asked about his dad. To make it up to him, the following weekend, I baked him a cake to give to him. But when I got to his house, he was arguing angrily on his porch with Jack! Ugh, have you no shame? Go back to your stupid new family and stop asking mom for money. Young man, I'm still your dad. You're his dad? I could see the unmistakable resemblance now. Pearl, what are you doing here? You know my father? I turned on my heel and began to run as fast as my legs could carry me back home, bursting through the doors the moment I reached. Mom, you won't believe- But Mom was staring at a small paper in shock. What's wrong? I'm pregnant! What? Jack is not even the guy you think he is! He- When I was about to tell Mom what I saw, he suddenly appeared at the door. I have a son. We turned to see Jack at the door, holding that pink chihuahua and a paper. What are you saying, Jack? First, I want you to have this paper and this puppy. When Mom read the paper, her <gasps> eyes went wide and she hugged Jack. You paid for my farmland! Yes, please, forgive me for lying. I forgive you! Mwah. I was so disappointed with Mom, and I left them angrily. How could she brush off Jack's lie just because of her farmland? When Jack left for God knows where, I confronted her in her room. He could be lying about many other things. Unless he's a criminal or something. I don't care right now. But I'm falling in love with his son. Then fall out of love, honey. Mom, you're becoming selfish. No, you're being selfish. You want me to sacrifice my only hope to save my farm for your flimsy teenage romance? In fact, we are getting married this weekend. I will never accept him as my stepdad. And the thing in your stomach will never be my sibling. I ran out of the house in tears and found myself back at Steve's house. So, you're part of Jack's new family. Not if we do something about it. Look, help me out here, just- Pearl, I was falling in love with you. Was? But I told you, I don't want anything to do with him or people he's close to. Please, if you don't want us to be friends anymore, fine. But help me save my mom from your dad. No one saved mine from him. Steve slammed the door in my face and I felt like a zombie. I left. I went to the park and cried my eyes out. My life was just falling apart and I didn't know where to start. Jack had confessed to his lie himself. There was nothing else I had against him. Just then, I heard a noise and watched in disbelief as Jack jumped out of the window of a nearby house with a cat and a dog in hand. Uh, hurry up, Jay. Try taking them yourselves. Ouch! He entered the car park nearby and drove off. I went home after that, but I was determined to find out what Jack was up to for mom's sake. So the next morning, I snuck into his car trunk. He drove for a while and stopped. When the coast was clear, I crept out of the trunk to the side of the shabby shack they entered. I could see an assortment of pets being bathed with dyed water. I took as many pictures as I could and snuck back to show mom. Mom! Mom! You need to see this! Jack's a thief! Mom! <coughs> mom wasn't home, but her pet chihuahua was. Hey, cutie. Can I see your paw? Her paw had the same star-shaped scar Mama G had spoken of. I took pictures, too, and called her. Mama G, how do you feel about your chihuahua in pink? She confirmed the puppy was hers and told me she was coming with the police the next day. But the next day was Mom's wedding. The wedding kicked off, and I was on the verge of losing it because Mama G was taking her sweet time. I should have called the police myself. Does anyone have anything against this couple? We do! As if on cue, Mama G stormed in with the police and some others. This man here pretends to be a vet to take info on exotic pets he comes back to steal and resell. Mom was in pieces as Jack was arrested. Despite my efforts to comfort her, she remained mute until Mama G came to visit days later. Be proud of Pearl. She saved you from getting married to a nonsense man. I am proud of her, all right. Where do I start to take care of Pearl and this baby? I can't use that farm knowing he got the money. Well, I have a few hectares of land to spare. It's a small thanks for bringing back my best pup. 
Mama G leased some hectares of land to mom for free. The best part? Mom decided to raise flowers only and opened a beautiful flower shop she named after me. You deserve it, Pearl. I got desperate and acted so rashly. Forgive me. It's okay, Mom. And don't you worry, I will love my kid sister, Orbra. It's not their fault their dad is a jerk. Oh, Pearl, I'm so lucky to have you. When mom gave birth, it was a beautiful redhead girl like her. And to everyone's shock, I carried her, despite the yuck all over her. I name her Rose. She's as beautiful as one. At school, Steve avoided me, but thanks to him, I had a few people in school I called friends now. So it was a bit shocking when he showed up at our shop one day. Pearl, I am really sorry for refusing to help. I know I will be asking too much for us to, um, start again. To be honest, the fire I had going for him had doused over the months. No hard feelings, but that's a really twisted relationship. I mean, you and I share a sister now. You're right. Can we at least be friends? Hmm, I'll think about it, but maybe. I learned to try and keep a calm head, no matter the situation. Otherwise, you may make a very big mistake and never make rash decisions on marrying a stranger from a dating site. Mom was just lucky to have me.